Aw, oh, heck yeah, it's the freaking Amber Collection. Ah, uh, yes, the Amber Collection. I remember when this thing was announced. They plan to release highly articulated dinosaur and human figures from the Jurassic Park series. You see, most dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park toy line can only move their legs at their thighs and their arms at the shoulders. They could use their mouths, but it was mostly used for an action gimmick. But when Mattel came in, they changed everything with the release of their Indoraptor figure. And this thing was posable as heck compared to the other figures. You could do so much with it thanks to the many points of articulation it has. However, at the time, it was the only dinosaur figure within the line that could do all this. So imagine my surprise when I heard that they were going to release a new line of dinosaurs that were fully articulated just like the Indoraptor. I was hooked. I remember when I first got this thing at a GameStop and there were only a few left. I gotta say, these things are pretty good, but there are some things that could use some improvement in some places, and we'll be discussing that today. But before we go any further, I'd like to state a few things. One, I will only be discussing the Jurassic Park and Lost World Raptors. I won't be reviewing the Raptor Squad as those are basically the same figure but repainted. Also, I don't have enough space in my room and if I bought them all, it'll kill my wallet. Heck, if they announced figures for the Jurassic Park 3 Raptors, that also might be pushing it. As of now, I won't be reviewing any other animals released in this line, such as the Pteranodon. Heck, I'll be lucky if I get my hands on the Dilophosaurus. I value this thing more than gold. And I don't plan on getting any of the humans that were released on this line either. So, let's take a look at both Amber Collection Velociraptors. Let's start out with the OG Raptor from the first movie. And there's something I have to admit. I'm not a fan of the first Raptor's color scheme. I mean, it's mostly one color throughout almost the entire body. It looks really bland. However, I will say this, I do like how there's some more attention to detail along the tail that shows some darker spots. There's even some paint in between the scales of the toes, but not so much the fingers, I don't know why that is. And I like how it fades out into a much lighter color when you flip the palm over. And the head is beautifully painted and sculpted, but the eye is a dark emerald green where it should be a more lime color like seen in the movie. But it doesn't really bother me that much. And the inside of the mouth is painted in a nice shade of pink with some splashes of red. So, what do I think of this figure overall? I'm not that big of a fan of it. This was the only raptor I could find at the time other than the members of the raptor squad and I was really hoping I could get one that had a more vibrant color scheme. Thankfully, my prayer was answered when they released the raptor from the Lost World. This is a figure that I was anticipating for a very long time as it's actually my favorite raptor design. I love how the orange and dark brown pops out and I'm a sucker for stripes. In fact, that's why I like the other raptors than the original one because they stick out more. But that doesn't mean that this figure is perfect. The paint on the tail seems to be much lighter than the rest of the body, which isn't more noticeable when compared to the original Raptor. The paint at the back of the shoulder seems to be covering up the shoulder itself, which makes it look really pale. And the entire hand, with the exception of the claws, is just a solid orange. There's really no other detail on it. And the legs seem to suffer the same problem as the arms. The paint at the back of the thigh and of the calf seem to cover up most of the leg, which makes it look very pale. Even the feet seem to suffer the same problem as the hands, where everything minus the claws seem to be colored in a solid orange. In fact, the tiny claw that reaches the back of the foot is colored over in orange, compared to the original raptor's claw which was colored in. Also, when I got it out of the box, there seems to be a horrible crack that's on the foot and I didn't even do anything. But the biggest problem that I have with the figure is the paint at the face. The paint at the face looks extremely pale compared to the rest of the figure. They should have added more orange to it. But I do like how there's a little bit more red inside the mouth than the original figure. It looks like it just killed something. So what do I think of this figure overall? I like it a lot more than the original thanks to its more vibrant color scheme. But while it does better in color, I think the original does a lot better in detail. Well, it's about time to talk about this figure's articulation. Now, I'll be showing it off by using the original Raptor since they're both technically the same figure. The mouth can open really wide by using the upper jaw and the lower jaw. There's rotation at the head and at the base of the neck. Now, all parts of the arm are on a hinge joint and can rotate, but I don't like rotating them as I'm scared that they could break off. The legs can also rotate, but it's really tight. I can't tell if it's a ratchet joint, and I'm too scared to do a whole 360. Also, the other parts of the legs can also rotate and bend at a hinge. And what's neat about the figure is that the sickle claw can move up and down. But what's not so neat about the figure is the frickin' tail. It's... Bendy wire. I really don't like the idea of bendy wire, as I think it limits the articulation of the figure and could probably wear off over time. And plus, the tail itself isn't fully straight, even when I tried to straighten it out by hand. 
In fact, when I got the Lost World Raptor, its tail was bunched up against the box so it looked crooked. I don't think I've seen this done to a Jurassic Park figure in recent times, since the old Kenner toy line. I could try heating it up with a hairdryer or warm water, but there's no way I'm gonna do that. Because if you compare it to a NECA figure's Benny Wire parts, it uses a more sturdier material. But compared to an Amber Collection figure, it feels like it could tear off, it bent too far. In fact, the feel of the tail feels very soft. Off, and if I apply too much heat to it, it could melt off. Plus, I think that there should be more articulation to this figure. I feel if so that they should have added some hinge joints at the toes and maybe an ab crunch. It's also worth mentioning that I really don't like the sculpt for the hands as it looks like it's webbed. And it would have been nice if they could articulate the fingers too. But hey, what we got is what we got and I'm okay with what we got. So both figures come with a base and a stand that simply plugs in. And you know, I really like the color that they used for the first Jurassic Park Raptors base. It looks like actual amber, albeit a bit too yellow. But they just had to ruin it thanks to the Lost World Raptors base. Why did they have to choose a clear white color for the base? I thought this was the Amber Collection, not the Silver Collection. Also, the logo isn't even painted. Also, is it just me or do I find it to be a very missed opportunity to have one of the bases in the shape of Isla Nublar and the other Isla Sorna? And as for the stand, I don't like it. I mean, it's fine. It can ratchet at both ends, but I feel as though there should have been more joints. And to attach it to the figure, you just... Well... I don't think this was intentional, was it? Well, all you gotta do is just stick it in there, plug it into the base, and there you go. Again, I think the stand works fine, but I have to reiterate, I think that they should have added more joints to the thing. I can't seem to get the raptor in a high enough jumping pose, and keep in mind, these raptors can really jump. The figure itself is roughly 11 to 12 inches long and 6 inches tall when fully stood up. And you know what, screw it, I'm going to use both figures for the size comparisons. Here's one of them next to the Figma Sakia Izuyoi. Here's one of them next to the Super Action Statues of the World. And if I had a Diego figure, this size comparison would have been much better. Here's one of them next to the Tokyo SOS NECA Godzilla figure. And because I'm a Jurassic Park collector, here's one next to the Kenner Dino Screams Velociraptor and Snapjaw. I can't really seem to choose which one I should recommend, as I think it's down to personal preference. If you want something with a bit more detail, then get the original Raptor. But if you want something that has more color, get the Lost World Raptor. That, or you could base it off of whichever movie or design you like. As for me, I like the Lost World Raptor a lot more. But you should hurry when it comes to buying these things, because they can get pretty expensive. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Whenever the heck that'll be. Listen, if they release Nibber Collection Spinosaurus, I want you to tell me why I shouldn't buy it. It's because you can't.